This video will give you an overview of my CNC machine setup and all the steps that go into making a simple part. About a year ago, I purchased a Shapeoko 2 mechanical kit from Inventables.com and bought the stepper motors and electronics from various online sources. Here's a shot of the complete machine from their website, and here's a view of my machine. Over the past year, I've used it for several projects, including this control box for the electronics, a number of fancier boxes, some 3D carving, cutting vinyl using a swivel knife, and even taught it to write with a ballpoint pen. Aside from special projects, I found the machine extremely useful for everyday cutting, things I had previously done with a scroll saw or hand tools. I'll show you all the steps that go into making this simple part. But first, let's take a look at the setup of my machine and some of its particular features. For the spindle, I'm using a DeWalt DW660 cutout tool. I've added T-tracks to the sides of the baseboard outside of the cutting range. Between the tracks is a 1 quarter inch thick MDF spoil board. I've made wooden hold down clamps to secure the stock. There's more information on my setup in the description below this YouTube video. Now let's look at the software steps I use to create a part. CAD design, format translation, CAM, and machine control, four different programs. I'll describe each in more detail, but first it's worth noting that Inventables is developing a program that combines all of these functions into a single free cloud-based program called Easel. It's still under development and doesn't quite meet my needs, but it's getting better all the time. For now though, I'm using the more piecemeal approach. And the first step is CAD design. While there are many programs to choose from, the design program I'm using is called Graphite. Of the programs in this video, it's the only one that is not free. I own an old version and I'm very used to it. So it's what I like to use for two-dimensional design. In this case, I'm choosing uh, this part from a larger design. It's a battery mount that will be cut out of 1 8 inch plywood. It has a trapezoid shape and a couple of slots for a Velcro strap. Here I'm saving it as a DXF file. Because I can't save it in the format I need, I'm using the Inkscape program simply to translate that file from DXF format to SVG format. That just takes importing the file and then saving it in Inkscape's native SVG format. The next step is the CAM program, or Computer Aided Manufacturing. Here I'm using MakerCAM, a simple free program. In the CAM program, you specify how fast to cut, how deep, the tool diameter, and other parameters. In this case, I'm setting the tool diameter to 1 8 inch and the cut depth to 0.15 inch. I'm going to make three 0.05 passes. I find that it works much better to make multiple fast, shallow passes instead of a single deep cut. After specifying the inside slots, the process re is repeated for the outside cuts. Again, the depth is 0.15 since the 1 8 inch ply I'm using is a little on the thick side. And again, I'm using 60 inches per minute for the cut speed. At this point, the program calculates the tool paths. They're shown as green outlines. For this part, I'm adding tabs to the outside cut. These will hold the wood in place after the cut, so it won't come flying off the machine. I'll position four tabs around the longer sides of the outline. Now 
Now everything's set, so I just need to output the G-code file that will be used to control the machine. And with that, the CAM process is complete. Next, I'll clamp down the wood and get it ready to cut. I'll start the communication control program. I'm using Universal G-Code Sender. Once communication with the machine is established via USB, I'll open the G-Code file. The program lets you preview the tool paths to make sure you're really going to get what you expect. To set the X, Y, and Z origins, I'm moving the machine by hand. To set the tool to the surface height of the stock, I'm using a thin piece of paper as a feeler gauge. Now I'm ready to start the machining process. From now on, all moves will be controlled by the computer. I'll raise the tool a little above the surface. Then I'll start the spindle. And start cutting. As you can see, it makes pretty quick progress. This video is in real time. First, it cuts the slots. Again, three passes are used. Now it starts cutting the outline. When I'm not filming on a small part like this, I will usually follow, it, follow the cutter with the vacuum throughout the process, just to eliminate the need to clean up later. This time I'm a little late coming in with a vacuum, so there's a bit more sawdust. On this third and final pass, you will see it pausing and lifting the bit to form the hold down tabs to keep the material in place. because now we're cutting all the way down into the spoil board. And there it is. The cutting's done. It cuts much faster than I do with hand tools, even counting the setup and computer time. And it does a much better job. More and more I find myself using it for simple, everyday jobs. Here I'm releasing the clamps, vacuuming off some of the sawdust. You can see that it made a nice clean cut. I used a straight flute carbon end mill, which works great on thin material like this. Print time, 1 minute 27 seconds. Very little cleanup is needed. Just cut the tabs with an X-Acto knife and give it a light sanding. Here's the finished piece. Thanks for watching.